Hi, everybody. Um, so I, I know we try to open these episodes on like a happy, jokey bit, you know, note, but I've kind of, and I asked Chema, this was cool. Um, I want to mention something that is uh, something that should be mentioned. Um, a few days ago, uh, two days, well, three days ago from the time of this recording, um ben potter passed away uh most of you probably know ben better as the comic storian um if you've ever seen his youtube channel he essentially he narrated comic books um from everything i could tell he was a fundamentally he was a good dude um i would say for almost a decade if not maybe an entire decade he kind of defined the youtube comic book community um Gemma, you know how toxic fandoms can be. Um, yep. But in his particular case, for the most part, um, he was very welcoming of everyone, whether you knew everything about comics already or you were new to the channel. Like, he welcomed everyone with open arms. He didn't give a shit. Um, yeah, fundamentally, he was a good dude. Yeah, I was right. Over a decade, he's been around. Um. But yeah, he unfortunately passed away in an accident. Uh, there are no further details right now. Um, and obviously, out of respect to his loved ones, we're not going to speculate on that. Um, but yeah, just sucks. You know, uh, an awesome person. And I'm not going to pretend like we're friends. Like we weren't. I never met Ben. But I genuinely listened to his voice for hours and hours and hours on end narrating comic books. Um I'm, I'm a huge comic book fan, and as I got older, uh, I had less time to read, obviously, because, you know, you get busy with college and stuff, right? Um, so with that, uh, I found the Comic Story channel. Him and Comics Explained were my guys to go and, you know, listen to and stuff. Um, and it's funny because even when I'm reading a comic book, like legitimately when I have time to read... I hear it in his voice and the voices that he makes for Batman or Nightwing or Superman or Joker or whatever comic book I'm reading, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, wanted to bring that up. Um, I think it should go without saying uh, Ben will be missed. He is a treasured member of the community and always will be. Um, and I think this goes without saying, but, you know, condolences to, to Natalie, his wife. His friends, his family, his loved ones, you know, everyone. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to start this podcast on a downer. Just... No, um, it's 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 fine. I mean, um, yeah, like I said, like I, I'm I was aware of the guy. I, I watched a couple of his videos, but I wasn't, you know, a follower or or anything. But it always sucks when you know a good dude just you know leaves too soon. So yeah. yeah, also condolences to his wife, family, friends, followers, everything. And um we are going, it's not our, you know, it's not the purpose of this channel, it's not a purpose of us, but if anything that I liked about the guy is that he always seemed to, you know, keep a good posture and uh almost wholesome in his channel. And I think what I like about what we do is that we don't come here to, you know, create riots, to create, like, anger, to create, like, hate. We are here to just talk about the things that we enjoy, and that's it. And I think that is the best way that we can, you know, continue that. Because um, YouTube is filled with a bunch of hateful, you know, nasty people. And I think it's good to want to sit down and just be like, hey, we're just going to talk about something we like. And if we sometimes there's there's times when we're like, you know what? I didn't like this. I don't want to talk about it. And we're like, yeah, sure. Next one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're never malicious in our intent. It's mostly just like, hey, you know, this movie wasn't the best. But there's, you know, yeah. I, I think we come at it from a good perspective. There's never a hate there. Unless it's the yeah. rock. You know, there's never a hate there. I mean, there's a reason for that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, recipes, you know, carry, we'll carry yeah. uh, um, our own stuff from here. And uh, now jumping uh, relatively wildly into another topic, we're going to start our review for the movie. 
Yeah. This is when you this is when you tell me hit it, man. So I could be like <laughs> For, Gemma, let's hit the intro. Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Gemma. And I'm Ron. Are you? Or maybe I'm Gary. I can't decide which one I am today. Reviewing Hitman. This is the rollback. He's not a killer, but he can pretend. A mild-mannered professor moonlighting as a fake contract killer sparks a chain reaction of trouble when he falls for a client. So this is the highly expected movie, for me at least, Mm -hmm. because this is directed by my favorite director of all time, Richard Linklater. And really? uh, what else has he directed? What? I do. I follow movies. I don't always follow the directors. I'll be honest with you. So Richard Linklater, director of School of Rock, Dazed and Confused, The Before Trilogy, Everybody Wants Some, A Scanner Darkly, Waking Life, Bernie, uh, Last Luck Flying, Slacker, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? A bunch of classics. Okay. This is my favorite working director because he manages to apply so much personality into his movies while also being very, very human. Uh, He can write romance. He can write uh, comedies. He can write action. He can write so much. And he's my favorite, like, chill director, like a director you can just put in the background and just have him playing. Uh, Some of my favorite movies are his movies, which, you know, that means a lot. And also, he's from Texas. That's that's important too. Also, he's a director that doesn't live in Hollywood. He lives in Texas, so I respect that. So, so yeah, a uh, big fan of him. Big fan of all his movies, and now his new movie. Technically, it premiered last year at festivals, and it finally slid into our Netflix accounts this year, uh, and we got to see it. The movie stars Glenn Powell, Adria Arjona, Austin Amelio. Rita, Sanjay Rao, Molly Bernald, Evan Holtzman, and other colorful characters. So I had the excitement to see it because I liked uh, what I had he- heard about it. I liked that it was a comedy. I love Richard Linklater. Glenn Powell is on a fucking run to be uh, one of the you know busiest actors working right now. Mm-hmm. And in this one, I think he... Uh, the previous movies that, 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 that he's been, he's really... Uh, Put out this uh, this very uh, memorable like personality. He has a certain charisma, and but I discovered this guy through a little movie called Everybody Wants Some that was also directed by Richard Linklater, and he played my favorite character in that movie, a character called Finn, a character that and this might be uh, I don't know if I ever said this out loud. But that was literally me in college. (laughs) His character in Everybody Wants Some was how I was or how I or how I like almost was. He reminded me a lot of myself. And now in this movie, Hitman, I also see myself in this character. So I related to this character a lot and I really like that. So I'm liking seeing this guy in movies and I'm liking seeing these kind of characters uh, from him. So, uh, but also Adria Arjona is here uh, with this movie. We are now we have now forgiven her for Morbius, and you know other uh, supporting characters are here as well. The story is bonkers, and the comedy is good. It is definitely an original idea, and I cannot wait to discuss it. So, what did you think about Hitman? I fuck, you're so hyped about this movie. <laughs> Damn it! You didn't like it, did you? <laughs> I didn't love it, but there's nothing I didn't like about it. It just didn't excite me. Like, I enjoyed it. I just, I guess, maybe I found a gap in the characters that I didn't relate to as well as you did. Um, For what it's worth, I don't have a lot of complaints about this movie. If anything, I really enjoyed the writing because you. I thought the movie was going to go one way, but it went completely a different direction. Um, Are we going to mention spoilers in this review? Hell yeah. Okay. Um, Like, to start, the first half of this movie is just straight up following Glenn and establishing his character and his mannerisms and his disguises and him, like, why he enjoys all this, like, make pretend, this make believe, and you follow all his hitmen. Which, which was your favorite? Because I can't decide if it was, like, the weird, quiet one with the orange hair or Patrick Bateman. 
The Patrick Bateman one was so funny. It was on <laughs> fucking point. Like the second that he walked in with like the suit and like he does like the face and like the laugh and the voice, like you could tell he was having a ball with that. Yeah. Um so someone mentioned uh that if this movie had come out 20 years ago with Jim Carrey as the star, he would have <laughs> massacred scores of people with this film. <laughs> That's not that's not a mark on Glenn Powell, but the fact that he can get that comparison. Yeah, because look, he um, he has uh, in the past couple of years, he kind of has made a name for himself uh, as you know, like a hunk, like a, uh, an attractive guy that's part of a team. You know, uh, he and I think he's always been kind of a goofy guy. Like he was really goofy, and everybody wants him. He was really goofy in this uh, rom com on Netflix called Set It Up. Mm. Uh, where I think he was like a perfect leading man in something like that. Mm. And then uh, Anyone But You, of course, was a big hit and people just find it. But like differently from Anyone But You, I feel like in this one, we get to see a little bit more range because he gets to play like a ton of different characters. And his main one is supposed to be kind of this dorky, nerdy psychology professor uh, who's kind of nervous, but kind of curious. Yeah. And which is radically different from like his character in Top Gun Maverick, where he was like, you know, the confident douchebag. Yeah. And he was a confident douchebag in Everybody Wants Him, but like in a funny way, you know, and that's kind of his role. He's like the funny, confident douchebag. Yeah. And uh, but like a lovable one. And in this one, I think he really shows his range. Like that range that we saw in Everybody Wants Him, we see it expanded here. I think he's not a leading handsome hunk. A leading romantic man. I think he's a character actor, and I think he's super funny in something like this. I, you know, Glenn Powell. I'll say this: this movie, for me at least, opened up his career a lot to me because I always thought of him as like the. He's always going to be the good-looking guy that you cast in an action film. He's a generic-looking guy. That's what I initially thought, right? Mm -hmm. But first time I saw him in Top Gun Maverick. Um, I was like, oh, okay, that's going to be his role from now on. You know, douchebag a bit. Um, not that Glenn Powell is, but, you know, the characters he plays, typecasted. But then we saw him in Anyone But You, and it's like, wait a second, this son of a bitch can be funny. No, 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 no. You can't be a hunk and be funny. You can be one or the other. You can't do both. And then he does this. And I'm like, oh, fuck, he has range. <laughs> no. Um. That's what good old Linklater dialogue will do to you. Like it makes it makes any character so charming. Which, by the way, he co-wrote the screenplay with Linklater, so yeah. he also co-wrote this. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed something when I looked at Linklater's filmography while you mentioned him. Um, yeah. and he, I think he works with his actors more often than not for some of the writing for his movies because uh, Ethan Hawke and I think well, Julia. Well, what was her last name? Julie Delpy. Julie Delpy, yeah. <clears throat> Co-wrote and helped to write um, <clears throat> Before Sunset and Before Midnight. Yeah, uh, they, they technically also co-wrote the first one, Before Sunrise, but they didn't get credit. Um, Before Sunrise, he also co-wrote with Kim uh, Krizaz. Yeah, uh, that's his Noon... writing partner. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, also, Noon Boys, he has a co-writer with that. He has co-written Fast Food Nation, Bernie, co-written The Last Flag Standing. Like props to this director. He's not afraid to work with his uh with his people. Yeah. And um yeah, and in this one, you could tell that you could tell they you could tell they had so much fun working there and everybody wants some that like that's why he they brought they, they work together again. Like working with Link later honestly sounds kind of like a dream. Like he seems so chill, but also like so focused, and like the writing is tight, the story is tight. I like how the movie starts with like this is a true story, like kinda, and uh, and they, they tell you like oh this 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 psychology philosophy professor, you know he and he helped uh, detectives in this way, and uh, yeah, another cast member for everybody wants him is also in the movie, and that's uh, Austin Amelio who plays the original hitman Jasper. Uh, he was also one of the one of the cast members and everybody wants him. So it was cool to see the two of them again. Was he a villain in that one as well or no? And what? And everybody wants him? Yeah, I don't think there is a villain, right? It's just like a... There's, there's like no a villains. Eye, you just follow their lives? 
It's just a vibes movie, yeah. It's a it's the uh, weekend before college starts, and it is like the baseball team for a Texas college. Yeah, and it is like everything that they do, like the weekend before, like the parties that they do and and, and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. One of my, if I had to give like one of my four favorite movies of all time, that would be one of them. I love everybody wants them so much. Is that on Netflix? It's on here. It's on Amazon, but you've never seen it. Never. I can find it. I'm not worried. Yeah, it's uh, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah, you can find it. Um, love it. Just absolute vibes. The vibes are immaculate, and so are this. Uh, first of all, I like how he's nervous at first, but then we have that really long, elongated scene where like he's trying to convince this guy that he is the hitman, and he's playing by he's 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 playing the character, and he's getting him to convince him by telling him like all these stories, and then at the end he like just leaves and it's like. Just the cops come in, uh, and I like that this turns into like he he gets a little bit more confident, al- almost to when he goes like, "Shit, what would Ron do?" And then yeah. just like slips back into that character. Uh, and it's really cool when he like meets uh, Adrian Hona, who plays uh, Madison, and these two have fantastic chemistry, just absolutely bonkers chemistry. They play really well. Do you think like the the director maybe had them like go out on dates and stuff to prep for the role because they clicked almost too well. And I know that's an old school Hollywood thing of having your actors actually like go out on dates, not like you need to be romantic, but just to like you guys need to get a feel for each other. From what I read, they they made Pinterest boards. <laughs> that's how they like like the two actors made Pinterest boards and they shared them with each other. And it's like, okay, she likes this. I'm going to try this. And then like, that's how they like, yeah. I mean, if that's how it works, fuck it. I'll shut up and take the win. Cause like the chemistry between these two and I don't mean to get uh, crude, but like the love scenes were like, I was like, man, should I like look away? Like this, this felt like real, real. Like it, it was very rated R in a good way, but very rated R. Yeah, but in a way that like still fits the characters. Like I like the development that, that, that both of them had. Like, uh, and I know this is like a quote that's going around a lot. Like the kids are saying this, but this is a movie about meeting someone that matches your freak. Like these two <laughs> are the perfect weird for one another. And I love stories about couples that are like this, that are insane, uh, and that match each other's freak. Uh, I wrote uh, a little novella like a, like a year ago or so. I finished writing it about a couple that are ghost hunters. And like my, what? You never told me you wrote. Yeah, I, I, I told you. I didn't tell you I wrote that, but I'll tell you that I wrote. I write. Yeah, but like you wrote a novella? How long is it? Like 120 pages or so. Send it. Speak Spanish. Wow. Oh, okay. You want to hurt me? I don't want to hurt you. I want you to learn Spanish. Uh, m- maybe that book will teach me. I'll start reading. <laughs> no, I use I use very fancy words. Um, bitch. <laughs> no, like uh, I'll send it to you, but it's in Spanish. Like that's that's the I'll thing. I'll have my grandma read it. <laughs> no, you don't want your grandma <laughs> to read it. Uh, I don't think I'm better, but like uh, I, I, I don't. <laughs> 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 You're going to learn things about your grandma you probably didn't want to know. Um, yeah. What? Like, it's it's about a couple that go, go, go. Okay, anyway, never mind. Um, Anyway, I love this stuff. Like, I love stuff where, like, it's not one of them that's weird. It's the two of them are weird. And they're weird together. Because uh, I don't I, I don't like the stories where, where, where it's like, He's weird. And she's like, well, he's weird, but like, you know, I'll deal with it. No, I want them both to be weird. And in this one, it finally clicked in that moment when he goes like, did you kill him? And she goes like, yeah. He was like, (laughs) was it in self-defense? And she goes, no, he was asleep. And it's like, (laughs) look, it's fucking amazing. Straight up, I'll be. I'll say this much. I know it's a comedy. She's yeah. a stone cold killer. If you've ever seen you, she is love, like <laughs> the actual version of that character that would like meet someone. It's like, nah, I could because he never murdered anyone. 
He, he <laughs> she's the one that was like, yeah, do it, shoot him. At the, <laughs> right after the club, and it's like, yeah. Why are you so into this? Like, <laughs> like, there's vibe and clicking and like, oh, I'm a dog person. I'm outgoing. There's that. That's cool. Yeah. But she's legit down for actual factual fucking murder. <laughs> <laughs> My man, I, I don't mean to, to discredit you here, but those are those are red flags. Those are crimson flags. <laughs> Was it self-defense? I mean, he was asleep. So what I'm hearing, Ron, is, Gary, is that she will shoot you in your sleep. She's not even going to give you a fair chance. That's what I just fucking heard. I don't know what you I mean. That, That's what I, heard. I mean, that works for some people, so, you know. I, <laughs> what kind of fucking relationship are these people in? Jesus. It's so funny. Like, it's so <laughs> funny that, they, that there's a movie that they show. But I haven't seen. I, how do I say this? I need more insane female characters in media. I need them so bad. Well, we because I need, I need more. I haven't seen women this insane since I read Chainsaw Man. And if you're caught up with the manga, you know what the fuck I'm talking about on that last chapter. Okay? You know, this feels like... The, you know what? This is what the vibe it's giving me. Do you did you ever play um, Telltale's uh, Batman: The Enemy Within? No. Uh, you know about it tell- I, I know Batman Telltale. I didn't know there was a, is, is there another one. There's two seasons. Season one no. is with the night got people, and then season two has Bane, Riddler, Mister Freeze, Harley Quinn, and Joker. No, I only play the only Telltale game I played was the um, I played the Walking Dead one, the first one. Yeah. And oh, uh I know. And uh I played the Guardians one and it was terrible. And the Among Us, that one's amazing. Like And they got they got like uh they went bankrupt just as they were working on a Telltale game for Stranger Things. And they got uh Well yeah. they got bought out. They were still working on Telltale games. A Wolf Among Us season two is set to come out this year, hopefully. Oh, okay. Uh no I don't know like I, I like I'll play something like uh like I'll play a a, a God what was this what was a game called uh the uh, Legend of Zelda no I mean I of course but like I meant like in the in that vibe uh uh like I'll play something like the Quarry but I don't think I don't think I'll ever play that kind of like Telltale's game Our Lives no Strange Life Life uh Life is Strange you mean Life is Strange that one okay. No, but like Life is Strange has, you know, vibes and a cool soundtrack and lesbians. I mean, like, it's got like, it's really got it all, you know? And there's a new one coming out, and the original uh, main character is coming back as well. Oh. Um, <clears throat> what's it called? But, wait, okay. but anyway, yeah. What What's happened in, the point in I was going to make was this in that Telltale yeah. one, they have a re they retell a bunch of the Batman characters, right? Well, not all of them, but the main one. Is Harley Quinn and Joker's relationship? You know, Joker's the crazy one that's in charge, and Harley Quinn follows him, and she's madly in love with. No, this movie gave me vibes of that because she's the crazy one. She's in charge. She's the alpha. In that Telltale one, they completely flipped the Joker Harley Quinn perspective on its back because the Joker is just known as John Dale, John Doe. He becomes the Joker by the end of the game, but Harley Quinn is firmly in charge in that same sense in this one i'm sorry she's the crazy one he's playing catch up to me yeah Um, because yeah even but hmm? but there's a really cool scene where like after um uh jasper shows up and it's like hey y'all made it great pay me yeah fuck you pay me yeah i mean Um, did Okay, how did you like Jasper's character? I'll, I'll tell you mine after you tell me yours. So here's the thing. Uh, that actor, he's the one, he was also in Everybody Wants Him, and he played a character called Ness, and he was such a doofus in that one. So to me, this is just grown-up Ness. Like, this is just what happened to Ness post Everybody Wants Him. Like, his baseball career didn't work, and now he's, like, he's doing this. Uh, I found him funny. Like, I found him stupid, but I find all cops stupid. So, like, to me, this is just, like, this just makes sense. Um, I, when he tried to, like, 
get get money from them so that he would be quiet. I, I figured like, yeah, that's exactly what a dirty fucking cop like him would do. Like Jesus, all of them. Man. Uh like all of them would. And um so I I, I didn't saw anything weird about that. What I didn't see coming was uh after he gets poisoned, the fact that uh uh Gary would be like, All right, I'm just gonna take this bag right here and just like, you know, gonna put it on his So uh, and we're and, done. Like, and we're done and everything's good and we'll just uh you know we'll try that thumb thing later and uh, yeah. Um yeah. I, when he was telling the story that he would he was he was throwing the fingers from the car. Okay? Oh okay. That get, I was like, what get oh. your hair out of the gutter, gutter gutter guy. I mean, kinda hard, man. Jesus. But they um I wasn't gonna say. They threw me through a fucking loop because I think the way most people expected that way I expected even this film was Ray was going to try to kill uh, Madison. Gary was going to have to present himself, the real self, kill uh, Ray, save Madison. They live happily ever after. I think that's how 99% of us thought that that movie was going to go. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, but then he didn't. And that's the best part. That is the exactly. That is the best part. That's what Linklater does. It subjects expectations. That's why everyone loves the Before Trilogy. Because he can write romance in like a very unique way. And this one, they're both fucking insane. And I love that for them. Like they match their freak, man. They met in the middle. The only thing I didn't like, I hate fast forwards with like, oh, look, we ended up together and we have kids and we have a house. I don't want to see that. I don't care about that. I hate it. I hate when they do that. But why? It, I kind of liked it, actually. No. Like, I don't want them to become a normal couple. I want them to keep being freaks. Okay, You want them to keep murdering people? I don't want them to keep murdering people. I want them to still be weird. And by crossing that off, like, oh, no, you know, now we have the kids. And, oh, we take them to school. And, oh, they ask us about dinner. And, uh, uh, boom. Oh. Like, no. No. Why are you so anti them moving forward with their lives? Jeez. Because, I don't know, if the movie had ended with, like, them, like, having sex on top of Nesbitt, of, 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 of Jasper, sorry, a body, like, as he was decomposing, I would have been like, this is the fucking movie of the year. Hell yeah. It's like the ending of Saltburn, where he's fucking the grave. It's like, hell yeah, brother. Like, yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? What? Look, I'm not going to disagree with you that them going in a different direction isn't a bad or good idea, but like, Jesus Christ, like you're, you want them to just go full depravity. I don't want full depravity. They already went full depravity. I would say there's a line between (laughs) like suffocating a guy and having sex on top of his dead corpse. I feel like there's a line somewhere in there. Oh, do you think they waited? I mean, they probably went upstairs and then went down and, like, finished the job. (laughs) I would hope. I'm not going to lie to you. I was kind of hoping Jasper would just end up being, like, a a douchebag that helped him out. I was kind of hoping he'd go down that route. Uh... Because you never see that. You never see the douchebag just be like, look, man, I get it. Just don't be stupid. That's all I ask. Nah, he's a cop. He was always, he was always gonna make a stupid decision because that's what cops do. Um, As you can tell, Chema bears holds no grudges. Yeah, I. Yeah. What are they gonna do? That's true. What are they gonna do? Arrest you? What are they gonna do? Arrest me? They, you you can arrest me for not liking your job. That's like. What if I was a cop? Would we still do this podcast? Don't ask questions you don't want to know, man. You son of a bitch. What? So on this last episode of the rollback, man, what a crappy movie to end this whole like the four year run. Hey, hey, if you if you would have gone forward with the whole fireman thing, I would have respected you like uh, like eleven times more. Hey man, I fucking tried. I apparently kiss enough ass. That's that's say. what it do. That's what it do. But no. Yeah. But, okay, but talking about this movie. Yeah. I think the best part is that they don't go in directions that you expect. I was expecting Ray to play a much bigger part. And she just fucking offs him on the side. And then it's 
it pulls almost the knives out because it's like, wait, are they going to get away with it or are they not going to get away with it? Like that's, yeah. that's, and I think some part of our monkey brain knows like there's going to be a happy ending. She's going to get away with it, but how are they going to do it? How are they going to get there? Cause like Jasper essentially has to hand him the chance to get out of it. Otherwise like they're going to get hanged. Yeah, and um, but I like that it didn't go into that direction. I like that it subverts expectations, and I like the movie is also pretty accessible. Like it's not as insane as like a Saltburn or or like a Bones and all, but um, but this is very funny. Uh, I really wish I could have seen this in theaters. Sorry, it's a link later project. It's my favorite director. I want to see it in theaters, even though it does work as a streaming film. I wish I could have seen this in theaters. See. I don't know if this movie works in theaters. It probably could have worked. You're probably right. But I feel like this is a perfect streaming movie. I think Netflix needs to go down this route. Stop making your own films. Excuse me. Stop making your own films and just buy them off uh, film festivals. Because this is a great film. Could have worked in theaters, but also great for streaming. Do both. Put it in theaters. For like, uh, you know, both. they have this yeah. ability. Yeah, come on, like it's linked later, man. Like this is one of the this is one of the best guys. Like this is like his movies. Sure, most of them are bombs. Sure, but like you know, he makes them so personal and they leave an impact. Like people remember these movies. Dude, does he win awards? Is that why he's still a director? I mean, Boyhood was a was big presence at the Oscars. That was a big one. He's working uh, on another one called Merrily Along We Roll, which I think is going to be another Yeah. Movie. Yeah, the musical that he, he's filming for 20 years. Yeah. So is he filming like a little bit every like year or so? Yeah. Oof, a lot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's going hoping... to be for the next 17 years? Yes. Jesus. Hey, he did it for Boyhood and it worked. I mean, I'm not saying it didn't work. I'm just saying, what a fucking commitment. How old is this dude? Uh, Link later, he's in his... Um... Okay, so he'll be 80. Okay, I think he could live to finish it out. This, that might be like his magnum opus, but yeah, he could finish it out. I mean, few things are going to be as good as, you know, the Before Trilogy or hell, even School of Rock. Like, yeah. Was the School of Rock a bona fide hit? I feel like it was. Yeah, that one was a hit, and like uh, that one, and I that, that one I, th I think did one like the box office. Oh yeah, definitely budget thirty five mil, box office one hundred thirty one mil. Yeah, single handedly launched the career of um, Jack Black and Sarah Silverman. Yeah, I'm um, joking. By the way, I I meant to actually say Miranda Cosgrove. Sure, that's why we have Megan. Um, but yeah, but for example, he did Taste and Confused, and like he cast all these actors for like the first time. Like Matthew McConaughey is in it, Joey Laren Adams is in it, Adam Goldberg, Anthony Rapp, uh, Ben Affleck. Like there's a ton of actors that just started in his movies, and uh, and they just grow up from there. And they're they're just vibes movies, and uh, and now with uh, I mean. Movies, his movies are the reason why we like uh, Ethan Hawke in movies where he's not like an action star. And, you know, I like him because of movies like, like, like the Before Trilogy. And uh, his other movies are just great. Slacker, when he, his first movie was Slacker, and that's the movie that inspired Kevin Smith to become a filmmaker. So, like, really? Thanks to, yeah, thanks to Slacker, we have Kevin Smith. So. I that, that would not have expected, huh? Okay, that's uh, yeah. you got me unexpected with that one. Jesus. Yeah. So yeah, to me, he's super interesting. I love all of his movies. Uh, I highly recommend. If y'all haven't seen your share of Linklater, you got to. And Hitman, it's on Netflix. It's super accessible. It's funny. It's entertaining. It's got really fun energy. And uh, a great performance by Glenn Powell, who I think is going to break out of his uh, his uh, like casting bubble after this. Because what's not to like comedy. out of this? Yeah, he's just good coming. What a shame he didn't get cats a can. He would have killed it as a can. 
As a Ken, yes. Could, I mean, maybe he plays Ken in the sequel. You never know about that. I don't think they're going to make a sequel to that. To Barbie? I mean, someone pitched a sequel, and I think it's a brilliant idea, where Barbie directs a movie about her life and doesn't get nominated for Best Director. <laughs> someone pitched that? And honestly? <laughs> fucking <laughs> Oh god, but only only if Greta's doing it. If she if she's not in it, I don't I, I'm not interested. Oh no, I don't think any I I don't think Margot Robbie does it without uh Greta and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Um Although, but yeah, if you what's up? What if they do a Barbie trilogy and every single movie they recast Ken with a similar looking Ryan Gosling? Like Nick Barbie 2 Electric Boogaloo has Glenn Powell. And then Barbie 3, The Revenge of Ken. Who would play Ken? Who's more generic looking? Fuck. Who's the most generic looking guy? Jesus Christ. In Hollywood right Glenn now? Powell, I am a fan of you. Uh, we're not insulting you. I am a fan. <laughs> Love your performance here. Love your performance and everybody wants them. If y'all want to see what a movie about just Ken's hanging out would be like, watch everybody wants them. That there, There's your fucking Ken movie. Um, Yeah. Uh, Channing Tatum. No, not Channing Tatum. That'd be Chris Pratt. No, not Chris Pratt. Chris yeah, Pratt. Not on this level. No, no, he he fell off. Yeah, yeah I Channing can't Tatum. find anyone else that would be anywhere on on their level. Yeah, then we just don't do it. Simple as that. Brad Pitt. Mm, what? Old so we can have an, so we can have another fucking bullet train. God. Damn it, I'm still angry about that one. It was uh, good, and you're wrong for hating it. That's what I... That's... No. No. i am never moved from... Literally will never move from that. I rewatched it again recently because they were playing it at work, but God damn it, it was bad. It was so bad. Bullet I Train? Think, I, think, I think it's actually worse than when I first saw it. I, I respectfully disagree. Uh. I, I respectfully disagree. What did that guy just direct that I didn't like? Uh, Fall Guy. Yeah. So wait, so you like Fall Guy, but not Bullet Train? Fall Guy is good. It's not great. It's just okay. And Bullet Train, I think it's straight up dookie. Uh. Well, anyway, about his wrong opinions. Let's keep. Let's finish up with uh with uh the Hitman. Well, it might be a hard thing to say, but this this probably will end up in my top ten of the year. The rest of the year has to suck for me to not include this. I had a blast. I had so much fun with this. I give it a 4.5 out of 5. It would be a perfect 5 if it wasn't for that ending. Other than that, fantastic. Uh, man, we are very different on this one. I give this one like a 6.5. Like, it's harmless, but I don't love it. Amazing. Every uh, single word you said was just wrong. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, look. I like it. Uh, kind of weird that it didn't take place in Texas, but I figured, well, it's because it's a real guy. He, he was probably from there as well. So, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, also, question yeah. is, is are hitmen really this big of a problem? Because they make it seem like there's like like 20 hits put out a month in New Orleans alone. And I'm like, I feel like that's an inaccurate amount, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't care. I kind of don't care. It's... It's for the good of fiction. Like, it's fine. I kind of find interesting the idea of, like, oh, Hitman's, Hitman aren't real. Like, we just made that up to, like, catch people. Like, that's fascinating. Like, imagine that's true. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I feel like Hitman may not be real, but if you want to hire, like, a gangbanger to take out someone, I feel like that's realistic. But isn't that a Hitman? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you don't, need, you, don't need, you don't get, like, a license for Hitmaning, I guess. That's true. Can anyone be a hitman? Yeah. Could you be a hitman? Put your information in the comments down below. Maybe you'll get some JK YouTube. JK. Yeah. You yeah, don't mean that. Better be careful with that. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to so, get us struck and stricken, struck and struck. We're, strick. We have a thousand subscribers now. We're big time. Estraken. Uh, okay. So that is our review of uh, Hitman. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we're doing Inside Out? Uh, Sure. Okay. So, it's... Uh, oh, God. In, inside, inside Out, out Part 2. two. And then what? 
We're doing Inside Out 2, Electric Boogaloo? Hell yeah. Uh, Inside Out 2, Inside and Carter. And uh, we're going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get, get, get deep, get deep with that shit. Okay. So that, that was our review of uh, Hitman. Uh, leave in the comments what you think about the movie. If you want to recommend another Richard Linklater movie, do so as well. If you want to formally apologize to Glenn Powell for saying that he looks like a like, a, like, a, like if a capybara, which is it was a human, you can leave that there as well. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chema. The book's a calabara. Read a fucking book. I've been Eddie. This was the robot. Signing up with the Ramada all cops are bastards. Goodbye. Fine, I will I will cut it at that. <laughs> <laughs>